right message for this evening. Amen. <laughs> you know, um, Dr. Brian had exhorted a little bit on Sunday morning um, and talked about worship and, and praise. And I just uh, uh, wanted to just speak for just a few minutes tonight. And I wanted to talk about praise for a little bit. And on top of this praise that we have, I know that uh, Andy has been working on a series, a big, big series coming up on praise. Wow. But uh, I wanted to just speak and just kind of hit a few spots here and there this evening because I want you to know tonight that praise is your weapon. Amen. Praise is your weapon. So many times, I don't know about you, but we hear the word, you know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And we just, it just becomes a phrase. And what happens is that we think about, well, what happens at church? That's what praise is to us. What happens at church? But praise is so much more than that. Amen. Because really, when we, when we put things in perspective, until your praise is totally implemented and it's totally active in your life, your faith level will never be complete. Wow. Because it takes praise to work in faith. Amen. Amen. You can have faith, but for faith to come to full fruition, you're going to have to praise. Amen. And so we know that um, as we celebrated Easter Sunday, we know that the finished work of Christ has already been done, right? But to bring that finished work of Christ into your life, you're going to have to activate your praise. Amen. It'll take you to another level. You know, you have to thank him for the things that have not yet manifested in your life. And it's so important that we get a handle on this because here's where we are. Our dominant thoughts in our life is what determines where we go. Whatever you are thinking on the most determines where you're going to go. And so as faith people and people of faith, we have an understanding of what grace has done for us. Through that finished work of Jesus Christ, then we have a grace that has been given to us to where we can move into that grace and not be moved by anybody's, anything anybody's got to say, not be moved by any of our feelings, not be moved by any of our circumstances, any situation that's going on around you. I'm not going to be moved by my feelings, but I'm going to be moved by faith. And so when we think about Thanksgiving, and we think about praise. Thanksgiving and praise keeps us focused on the promises of God. Wow. Complaining and murmuring keeps us focused on the problems we're dealing with. Yeah. So when we're thanking God and we're praising God, then we are looking at the promises of God. But when we're complaining and murmuring, we are looking on the problem. And focus is huge. Amen? Focus is huge. There are promises that you can't see. And the devil looks at you and he said, you cannot even see what it is. But you have the audacity to open your voice and lift up a praise unto your God for something that you can't see. Can you imagine how much that irritates the enemy when you do that? Amen. Can you only begin to imagine how he sits and just grits his teeth because you're praising God for something that you can't even see? Do you know that when you praise God, angels move quickly? Yes. There are so many things that happen when we begin to praise God. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 61, you know, it's Isaiah 61, it starts out and it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. And he starts giving us all these reasons for the anointing. And when we get down to verse 3, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon you to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified do you know that the spirit of the Lord is upon you to put on praise 
He'll come and put a praise right on the inside of you. Sometimes you don't even have to muster it up. If we really believe in the anointing and believe we can walk in the anointing, flow in the anointing, let the anointing rub all over us, then we can get to a point in our lives where we understand that no matter how heavy I feel, no matter how what the circumstances are, it doesn't matter what it looks like, I can put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and the anointing of God that is on that will break every yoke Amen. that is on our lives. Amen? It will break it. What happens when we begin to praise is it works like a magnifying glass. Okay? Whatever it is that you are praising God for becomes bigger in your eyes. It's like looking through that magnifying glass where you can't see that thing. Uh, here's what it is. You ever thread a needle? When you're over 40, don't even try. Amen? Don't even try to thread the needle when you're over 40. Because you need the little magnifying glass to put in front of there to find that little tiny hole that you got to go into. Well, this is how praise works. And David had an understanding of how praise was supposed to work. Because he said the words in Psalm 34, 3 and 4, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. What was David saying? Come on, let's make God big in this place. Let's focus on who he is. The more we focus on who he is and what he's done, the more we stand up and give praise as Jan gave praise to her testimony, which triggered Kelly to give praise to her testimony. And if we would have kept going, we could have just kept giving testimonies. And the more we magnify him, the bigger he becomes in our lives. Amen? And it teaches us that as we praise Him together, even though it's for 50 different circumstances we're praising for, we all come together and we together corporately begin to exalt His name. Come and let us magnify the Lord. Together. Together. Let us exalt His name. Together. Amen? So it's a mistake until if you're going to wait till God showed up to begin to praise, wow. you messed up. Wow. Because we praise Him before it happens, we praise Him while it's happening, and we praise Him after we've gotten the manifestation that we were believing for. Amen? Ooh. Our praise shouldn't change because our praise isn't based on the problem. Ooh. Our praise is geared to the problem solver Amen. and whoever that problem solver is. So I don't know about you, but when we talk like stuff like this, it kind of makes us peculiar. We're kind of strange. When Jan stood up in that car lot and said, praise you, Jesus, she said it herself. Kind of looked kind of funny around that place. But the Bible does say that you are a peculiar people. Yes. So God gives you permission to be weird. <laughs> he gives us permission. <laughs> and it's okay. Because let me tell you what. Satan is standing there gritting his teeth. And God is standing there grinning. <laughs> Because I guarantee you, all of heaven watched her do that in there today. And, and, and I guarantee you, someone walked out of there and remembered what she did. Amen. Someone remembered what Jan said today. Now, I don't know about you, but you know really not everybody believes in the devil. They really don't. Just the same as not everybody believes in Jesus. Amen. Not everybody believes in the devil. And so, most people don't even think that they even have an opponent. But we know that we do. And we know that the Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay? And so when we know these things, then we've got to be careful that we're appropriating the words of our mouth to what we know about Jesus. Okay? Go to Colossians 2 with me. We just celebrated Easter. Did we not have a glorious Easter service? Oh, man. I like it when we start putting out chairs. That's glorious. Amen? I'm going to read to you in the Amplified Bible because here's the things that happen. Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And Jesus has already fought the battle that many people are trying to fight today. Amen. He's already won it. He's already won it. In Colossians 2, in verse 14, it says in the Amplified Bible, having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note or the bond, 
with its legal decrees and demands that was in force and stood against us. It was hostile to us. You know what? There was a legal decree that death has been wrote over your life. And when Jesus came, he canceled it all out. Amen. He blotted it out. He wiped it away. And it said this note, with its regulations, its decrees, its demands, he set aside and he cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to the cross. It's been won. He said it is finished. We talked about it. Good Friday. We talked about it all through the Holy Week. We celebrated what He had done for us on Sunday. And somehow, by the time we get to Wednesday, we think we all about fighting the devil again. And while, yes, He's a worthy adversary, guess what? The war's already been won. Amen. It's already been won. It's a done deal. And what happened is he even went farther to tell you what was done on the cross. And he goes into verse 15. And he said, God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us. Yes. Somebody better be shouting. Yeah. You don't have to do all that. Because he did it for you. Amen. You just have to appropriate the word and the work of the finished work of Christ that was done in your life. He disarmed principalities and powers. Amen. They were against us. And he even goes farther. Because he said, not only am I going to cancel it out and I'm going to forgive you of all your debt and I'm going to erase it all away. He said, but I'm going to go to the sources and the little demons, all their little ranks that they walk in, and I'm going to go to all those little demons. I'm going to disarm them. I'm taking all their power away from them in the name of Jesus. He just did it because that's who he is. Amen. That's the finished work of Christ. That's what he did. He finished it. He didn't, just, he didn't just die and then get up out of the grave. He went to hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he got everything that belonged to you. He disarmed every principality, every power. He went there. He took a hold of the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And then he arose and ascended at the right hand of the Father. So the work's already been done for you. Amen? <laughs> but he didn't stop there. Because then it says, And he made a bold display and a public example of them in triumphing over them in him and in it the cross. Do you know what he did? He took all those disarmed imps, all those principalities, all those powers, and he put them on display. They have been stripped of their power. Wow. And he didn't just put them on display. He said, now that you're done looking at it, let me parade them through town. And let me show you how defeated that the enemy really is over our lives. Amen? If we have an understanding of that, it'll change your praise. Amen. Because you won't be so worried when everything and all hell comes against you. Because you realize in the finished work of Christ, it's already done. It is finished. Those powers have have been disarmed, they've been defeated, they've been put on display. I mean, all the whole world knew what had happened. Amen? And I don't know about you, but this is where spiritual warfare got all messed up. We were right in the middle of all of it. When everything was spiritual warfare. Fight, I fought more devils, so I didn't have a voice left in me. Amen? Because I thought that's what you had to do. But you know what I see? <laughs> Spiritual warfare is real. But in everything that's real, there's a counterfeit for it. And some reason, somehow, us Christians can't stay balanced with anything. We always have to go to an extreme one way, or we have to go to extreme another way. Amen? Now, if a principality comes down here and manifests itself to, to me, I'm going to deal with him. But you know what I'm going to say? You are finished in the name of Jesus. Not because I said so, but because of what he did. And I'm going to quote this verse and tell them, and because all my debt has been wiped away and canceled out, I have the right to stand here and talk to you and tell you, you've already been disarmed, you don't have any power, you've already been put on display, and you might as well get on out of town unless you want me to lead you out that way. 
and put you on a display all over again. Amen? But you know what happens in the body of Christ? We don't have to go to the heavenlies to have warfare. Because the Bible tells us our warfare is right here. Yes, yes. Right here is where our warfare is. And so we have to make an understanding inside of ourselves that win or lose, the battle's right here. Amen. Whether we win it or whether we lose it. So the devil tries you to go back and get all that you know you deserve in Christ, not because of what he did, but the devil wants you to go back and get it by what you do, wow. by your works, your performance. Wow. Your good behavior. That's what he wants to do. Wow. He already knows he's defeated. But if he can twist that thought process in our minds and make us understand that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, that we've still got to fight, we've still got to, we've still, yeah, you got to stand your ground with him. But when you stand your ground with him and when you're talking to the devil, you got to talk to him through the finished work of the cross. You can't talk to him just through your own words saying whatever you think your new theology is for the week. All you need is the name of Jesus. And all you need is to take your authority that you've been given in that name and tell him to get out of town. Amen? So he wants to convince you. He wants to convince you that healing isn't a finished work. But he's a liar. He wants to convince you salvation isn't a finished work. But he's a liar. Amen? And so we have to have an understanding that you can't do all this stuff by yourself. But by faith, we receive the finished work of Christ in our lives. And if everything that we do has to flow out of that understanding, that it's his work, yeah. it's done, it's finished... I'm done with this. Amen? So the enemy wants us to think differently. He doesn't want you to believe that Jesus did it all. So when you begin to praise Jesus, because he did it all for you, the devil gets upset. Amen. He gets upset because he has an understanding that everything that you have access to, he made possible for you. And when you can praise him for the victory that you can't see because of the finished work of Christ, the enemy is sitting over there saying, wait a minute, she is cutting me up with her words. She's cutting me up with what's coming out of her mouth. Amen? Because I believe that praise has a purpose. Amen? And it's not just to sit in church and say, praise you, Jesus. We're just good little Christians. No, there's a lot more behind it than that. We praise Him for what He has already done. Amen. What does Psalm 103 say? Oh, i got to read this. Out of the Amplified Bible, just because I want you to hear verses 1 and 2. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O oh my soul. The King James says, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Forget, bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. But look what the word bless means. Affectionately, gratefully praise him. Affectionately, grateful, praise him. Don't just, because I know i got to praise God, I need to get loud tonight. I don't want anyone to think I'm backslidden. No. No. You missed the whole thing. You can bless Him in your silence, in your mind. You can bless Him with vocally. You can be grateful, praising Him because you're grateful. Well, I don't have my answer yet. No, praise Him because you're grateful that the answer is already done because He's already won. Amen? Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, <laughs> it doesn't say always, but it said not one of them. Don't forget a one of those benefits that's in Psalm 103. When you praise Him, you can literally go to God with Psalm 103, and you can praise Him. Your whole life's covered by the time you get done. It doesn't matter if you can't see it, you don't have it, doesn't have manifested itself yet. It is a praise. What are we praising Him for? He forgives every one of your iniquities. He heals each one of all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit and corruption. He beautifies, dignifies, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. We all need that. We all need some tender mercy. We may think we've arrived in our spiritual, you know... 
I don't know heights of what we are today, but we still need tender mercy. He satisfies your mouth. Amen? Your necessity and your desire at your personal age and situation. Yeah, I need Him. I need that. Yes. I need that right now. <laughs> Satisfy my mouth, my necessity and desire at my age. See, you don't have to be 85 to praise God. Amen. You don't have to be 50 to praise God. You don't have to get married to praise God. You need to be praising God like the little ones did. Amen. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But he executes judgment. So it goes on and on and on. And when you go all the way through Psalm 103, you get clear down to the end. And in Psalm 20, he says it again. Bless, affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord. You, his angels. See, when we praise God, I told you angels move. Why? Because they're praising God with you. Amen. They're not doing anything. You have tied their hands and put them in a corner if you are murmuring and complaining about what's going on inside of your life. But if we begin to praise God, the angels are loosed. Amen? And it says, bless, affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord, you His angels, you mighty ones who do His commandments, hearkening to the voice of His word. Bless, affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord, all you His hosts, all the armies of God. The hosts are the armies of angels. Amen? And guess what? It's not just the ones around the throne that are praising. It's the ones that are ready for battle. They're praising too, according to Psalm 103. Amen? And then it says in 22, Bless the Lord, all His works in all places of dominion. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord. Oh my soul. Not my spirit. My soul. My mind, my will, my emotions. You better get thankful. You better get grateful. You better find where praise is. Amen? You better do it with affection. You don't, don't do it like a robot. That's not what he called us to do. He wants your whole heart into it when you begin to give praise. The enemy is going to attack you. He will. He will take the scripture. And he will, he will twist it, he will turn it, he will do whatever it takes to keep you out of the plan and purposes of God. Amen? You know, when Paul was in Corinthians, he was, he was telling them that he was going to come and visit them. He was coming to visit them. When he come through Macedonia, he was going to come and visit them. And he, it even said that, you know, maybe I'll sit there and I'll spend a winter with you. And then he went on and he said, but I'm going to stay in Ephesus until it's time for Pentecost. He said, I'm going to stay there. Now, he had personal plans because he wanted to go spend a winter. But at the same time, verse 9 tells us this, For the great and effective door has been opened to me. Listen to me. And there are many adversaries. Wow. You think God's just going to kick a door open for you and you're going to walk through it and not face any kind of backlash? Wow. For a great... An effective door. Not a door. Not a doggy door. A big door. That is going to be very effective for you. For the things and the purposes and plans God has for you. Wow. And it's open. Yeah. But guess what's standing there? The enemy. The enemy's standing there. And so, the power of praise... What I want to mention to you tonight is that this power of praise towards God will shut him up. Yes. It will hush him. It will silence him. Amen? It is like turning around to the devil and saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. You might as well be standing there looking at the devil going, Shh! <laughs> be quiet. Because I'm sending forth a praise. Praise will silence him. You know, the only power that the enemy has over you is suggestions. Never forget that. He will give you suggestions. And you have to know when he's talking to you, the devil. You have to know when he's giving you a suggestion. And you have to know when he's talking through somebody else to give you a suggestion. Wow. 
Because most of the time, he uses people to suggest things to you. Yes. He'll come to you when you're alone. But boy, when somebody's got something to say, and I just liken it into this, you got to know when the devil's running his mouth. Yep. And you got to recognize it. And I'm telling you right now, confusion will hit your mind. Witchcraft will hit your mind. All that stuff will hit your mind. But when you know people are talking about you, praise your way out of it. Amen. Praise your way out of it. Don't even think about anything that's going on. If you look in Psalm 8, verse 2, it says, Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When you look that word strength up, and you'll see it in many translations of different translations of the Bible, that word strength is owls, O-W-Z. And that word means strength through various applications. Force, security, majesty, and praise. So when we can read this, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise. Because he did it for a reason. Do you know your little ones can shut the mouth of the enemy? Wow. Your babies? This says nursing infants can shut the voice of the enemy up? Because there's a strength down on the inside of them, amen? Because of the enemy, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Do you know what this tells me? You don't have to have a doctorate degree to be able to shut the devil up. You can be a brand new baby born again Christian, and you can begin to give your praise to God, and strength is going to rise up on the inside of you, and you're going to shh the devil. Some of you need to go home and just do that shh. <laughs> He's going to try it on me tonight. <laughs> Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Amen. Shut him up. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants. You have ordained. It's God's plan. It's His purpose. It's what He decreed and declared. He ordained the praise to come out of you no matter how old you are as a Christian. That is powerful because we got to shut the devil up. Now, verse Psalm 27, verse 6 says this. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Where? What? Ha! Ah, it's going to lift my head. Wow. It's going to lift my thoughts. Amen. It's going to take me out of this soul realm and it's going to lift me up above them because I'm going to sing praise to God and I'm going to shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Amen? We've got to get a hold of this. It's not just a church thing to do on Sundays and Wednesdays or when we're gathered together. You can get in your car. You don't want to hear me in my car when I'm by myself because when the devil comes to sit in the passenger seat, he's going to get a high praise. And it don't matter because when you're in a car, they just think you're crazy when they're going by you anyway. <laughs> just like Andy said, half of them flip me off anyway because I'm not driving right. <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they say. I tell them it's just my age and it's okay. But you know what? You can get in your car. You can get in your home. You can get in your bed. You can have a grateful, heartfelt praise that comes flying out of your mouth. You can thank Him when you don't feel like doing it. You can thank Him when you don't see anything going on around. And I'm telling you right now, the minute you start praising God, it... Wow. That's what happens to the enemy. He has to shut up. Shh. Shh. So when you start thinking bad thoughts, just shh. Wow. Shh. Shut it up. My God is able Amen. to save and deliver and heal. Restore anything that He wants to. 
<laughs> you can cop up an attitude. I've taken my broom in my kitchen and I've opened my back door and I have taken that broom and I have swatted it halfway across the kitchen and said, get out of my house. Get out. You don't belong in this place. And he left. <laughs> I remember doing that one day and I, I was getting ready to mop my floor and I had a bucket water there many, many years ago. The kids was little. I had my little mop bucket there and I was getting ready and man, I felt that evil presence come in my house and I'm like, no, you don't, you don't belong here today. I'm done with you and I just took that broom and I'm telling you what, and you know what I did? I didn't even mop my floor because I just knelt down by my bucket and I just started praising God. Wow. Amen? Because the devil don't have no right in your home. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer up the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Not when it's convenient. Not when you feel like it. When it's a sacrifice and you're gritting your teeth and you're getting really upset and you don't like what's going on, just grit your teeth and say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me just start saying it because sometimes you need to speak out loud so you can hear what's coming out of your mouth if he's talking that loud just start talking two people can't talk at one time amen but does it sound familiar offer a sacrifice of praise continually oh didn't the bible tell us we're to pray without ceasing we're to pray all the time well, if you're to pray all the time, you've got to praise all the time too. Amen. Amen? It's, not, it's not just, it's a lifestyle. Yes. If you would begin to praise God, it is a lifestyle. You can change everything in your world by just praising God no matter what it is you're doing. If you come into the house of God, i got a headache tonight, I really don't feel like being here, I'm really, really tired. I know y'all worked all day today, you know? I mean, come on, man, I was delivering food boxes all over town. I had to run home at like 5.15 and jump in the shower because I was sweating to death because I was able today to bless people with some of the food boxes. And I'm like, they said nobody will come and get these food boxes. I said, that's all right, I know who needs it in boxes, just put them in my van. And so Gary Montgomery called me and I went out there. I had 22 food boxes. If you need one, there's still a couple of them left. I drove them all over town, dropped them off on people's doors. There you go. You need some food? Come on. Lower your pride and take some food. It's free. It's going to go to waste if you don't need it. Amen. We get tired. We get tired. In Psalm 134.2, it says this, lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Now that don't mean... Because then it says, and bless the Lord. Again, in the Amplified, it says, affectionately, affectionately, and gratefully praising. Wow. I didn't ask you to do it. Everybody said, every time she gets up, she says, everybody lift their hands in the sanctuary. I'm just quoting the scripture. I'm not telling anybody to do anything that God didn't already say. Amen. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Amen. Well, you know, I just don't like to do that. Hey, I'm sorry. It doesn't change it. You know what? Lift your hands in the sanctuary, except for Dr. Brian. He doesn't have to lift his hands in the sanctuary. He can just bless God right where he is. That's not what it says, is it? And you can't put your name in there either. Right. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Because this is the problem. And this is what we don't see. It's more about what God wants than about what you want. Amen. It's more about what He wants than about what you want. Because God requires certain things in praise. That doesn't mean He requires it all the time. Because there is all, like seven different words for praise. We could all go through that. There is all kinds of ways to praise God. And no one can tell you how you're supposed to praise God. And no one should be. Amen? That's the praise team's job. They're the ones that are supposed to hear and just say, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. We can't tell you what to do. 
But we can say, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God. Come on, let's go, let's go up there. Let's, oh, come and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. That's a praise team's job, amen? And so we have to be cautious that we have an understanding that when we praise God, you can't come in here every service and say, well, I got to obey the scripture. Lift up my hand in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. No. But if you come in and all of a sudden your hand flies up, just bless him because you got freedom to do that in this house. Amen. There are some houses you don't have the freedom to raise your hand. They'll take you outside. Amen. Amen. They'll say, come on, you don't belong in this place. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Real quick. Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise Him in the heavens of His power. What are we going to praise Him for? Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to the abundance of His greatness. Praise Him with a trumpet sound. Praise Him with a lute and a harp. Praise Him with a tambourine and a single or group dance. Praise Him with stringed or wind instruments or flutes. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Oh, I just hate those drums in the house of God. <laughs> it's too loud. Praise Him with a loud voice. Let everything that has breath and every breath of life Praise the Lord. Now I want to break something down for you. When you look at the word that says loud clashing cymbals, you know what that means? It actually, in the King James, it says high sounding cymbals. That word means a shout or a blast of war. Wow. <clears throat> It's an alarm that is being sounded off, amen, when you begin to praise God. It's a shout of joy. That's what that loud clashing symbol means. If you look it up, have you ever had an alarm that was quiet? Because if you did, you didn't wake up. When Brian was driving a truck, he had this alarm called a screaming meanie or something like that. Screaming genie. Yeah, it would reach to the fire department in town from 776. It is that loud. I mean, you would jump out of your skin. Amen? This is loud, clashing cymbals. Resounding cymbals that are loud. Why would you need that? Well, I don't know about you, but most times when people go to war, it's not quiet. Amen. <laughs> It's not quiet in war. And praise is our weapon that we're using. Amen? So as we are praising God, what literally happens is we know in Psalm 22, 3, it said that the, that the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. The Lord is enthroned upon the praises of His people. So when the Lord begins to inhabit your praise, He comes into you. Amen? And when the cymbals are going and the drums are going and the music is loud and we shout in under God with a voice of triumph. Now listen to me. Don't shout when it's worship time. Right. That's, right. That's out of order. But there's a time to shout. Yep. Amen. There's a time to shout. There's a time to lay prostrate before the Lord in your worship. There's a time to clap. I love. There's something, I don't know what it is, but there is something that clicks in me certain times when a congregation begins to clap. And it's like I feel that anointing on a clap. And I'll say, put your hands together and start clapping God because you just feel it. It's like it's that moment that he wants to do something in the spirit with what your praise is. And so we have to have an understanding that while we are praising God, he is inhabiting you. He's moving in there. He's taking up residence on the inside of you. And you have to know, oh, well, he's already in me. But you know what? He can become in you to the point that it's an overflow. You can be so full of him. I don't know. I don't know about you. I mean, the Amplified Bible talks about being filled with the Spirit. And it says being ever filled. Like it just keeps coming. And it just keeps coming. And it just keeps coming. And that's what happens when we praise God. Amen? And so what happens is all that is going on is you're praising God and all the music is going and God's inhabiting you and you're becoming that habitation of the Lord.
Lord. And all of a sudden, you're not thinking about your circumstances. You're not thinking about the things that were going wrong. You're not thinking about that your body's hurting. Why? Because God just inhabited your praise. Amen. And He came and He moved in. And when He moves in, He takes over. Because it's never about our situation or our circumstances. It's always because He is worthy to be praised. It is the most powerful, powerful weapon that we have. Amen. Amen. You all know about Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat has got an army coming at him. He's a little nervous. He goes and he inquires of God what it is that God wants him to do. And it's really interesting because when you read the story, God never comes back and tells Jehoshaphat what to do. You want me to tell you who, who God came in that story? He came to one of the Levites wow. that was the sons of Asaph, who was the music people, the tribe of the music people. Wow. And all of a sudden, this is the one that went to Jehoshaphat. And this is the one, his name was Jehaziel, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly, and it said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. See, that'll happen to musicians. The Spirit of the Lord just come upon him. Why? Because that's the anointing. That's what they've been set apart for. That's what they've been sanctified, amen, to do for God. It's a purpose that he has for their lives. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he's the one that said, Hearken all Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat. And he said, the Lord says this to you, don't you be afraid or dismayed at this multitude because the battle is not yours, but it belongs to God. Amen? And so he tells them, you go down there tomorrow, amen? And you're going to find them at the end of this ravine. And, in, and if you're looking, go back and read this, okay? I, for lack of time, because I want to get closed up. Second Chronicles 20, 14. And he said in 17, you don't need to fight this battle. Take your position, stand still, and see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you, O Judah, the praisers, and Jerusalem. Fear not, be not dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them because God's with you. Wow. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head to the ground. Because you know what? Someone with a praise, someone anointed to praise, had marked and perceived and heard the voice of God. And it's so funny to me because never in God's instructions did he say to put the praisers out front. They knew to do that already. They already knew it. They had to have. There was no instruction from God. He literally said, you don't have to take your position. That's what he said. And this Levite knew that the praisers and not the warriors had to be in the front. He knew it. And so, when he had consulted with the people, Jehoshaphat, he appointed the singers to sing to the Lord and to praise Him in their holy priestly garments as they went out before the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and His loving kindness endure forever. And the greatest thing, this is the greatest. you got to know this. Amen. And when they begin to sing, the Lord moved supernaturally and sets up all these ambushments and they literally, the enemy, self-slaughtered themselves. Yes. <laughs> yes. Who but God? Picture that. Where is our praise knowing that when the enemy comes against us, that our praise, if we'll stand our position and fear not, we will see the salvation of our God. And at the time he tells us to, when we go up to use our praise as battle, and we take it first and foremost, amen, onto our battlefield, let me tell you what, just shut your eyes and only imagine what that victory is going to look like. Because you're going to be laughing your head off <laughs> as you literally watch none of your people, none of God's people, none of God's angels doing anything. They all, the enemy, turned on each other. Every little imp beating the other one up, slaughtering them, taking them out. They're laid out all over the field. And here you are. Wow. wow well, okay. <laughs> I guess that battle belongs to God. Guess what? Praise God. All the battles belong to God. Amen. 
all the battles belong to God. We got to know that praise is our weapon. Amen? Amen? See, it wasn't about the war. It wasn't about the walls of Jericho that come down. It was about a promise that God said, I'm going to deliver you. Amen. I'm going to deliver you. And he went around the walls of Jericho and he used a shout of praise. And he went on a battlefield and he used a song. Wow. Can you imagine a little simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus, knocking the head off of your enemy? Wow. Didn't even take a stone, just a praise. Wow. That came from an affection, grateful, amen, grateful praise her. Wow. And that's what we need. And you got to know it. My mom was telling me the other day what stirred this message was my mom was telling me the other day that she had had a dream and I cannot remember exactly. I won't quote it word for word. But she had a dream that she was in this big group of people and there was all this confusion that was going around all over the place. And my mom walks into this situation and my mom said, was it the church mom? Was it the church where all that was? Can't hear me. It's it's a it's a there was I think it was church. But anyway, she was around this big group of people, and when she walked in the room, all this confusion was like all she could see it, it was like all over the people. And she just stood there in the dream. She said, These people don't know how to fight the devil. Wow. They don't know how to fight the devil. And so she went on in a dream. And she told him, I'll tell you what we need around this place. We need a revival. <laughs> but you know what? Praise will help you fight the devil. Amen. Praise will shh the enemy. Amen. Amen. Shh. Come on. When he comes to visit you in your thoughts, shh. Wow. Praise the Lord. Bless him. What about just singing a song? I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. You can even take an attitude with it. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, you all, come on. You can have fun with God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got a feeling. You out of here. Can I open the door for you on your way out? Because praise is a weapon. It's good stuff, isn't it? Amen. Oh, wait till you hear what Andy's got. You got some good stuff. Amen? Some good stuff on that voice coming out of your mouth. Wow. Praise. Praise. It has many, many things it can do. But it'll shut down the mouth of the devil Amen. tormenting you. Shut it down. You got a scripture? Is that what you said? After being at this church for literally about what, Karen? Uh, long time. Something like that? Yeah. This is one of the most religious things I've seen in our community. But I like hymns. Yeah. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> in Ephesians, it says, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to remind people, because a lot of times people say what they've heard. Mm -hmm. Now, I grew up in a Nazarene church. Mm -hmm. and this is not highlights, so I've been around for a while. And I like hymns. I like Benny hymns. <laughs> the ones he does on his crusade, I love yeah. those. Yeah. But I want to check, I want to inform you and instruct you as a leader in the house that worship is not a menu. It's not a buffet. Wow. If I like the song I participate. It's not for you. It's not an entertainment. Amen. If you come to be entertained, you already are in the wrong mindset. Hallelujah. It's for God. Yes. And, and so I, I've had a couple people before tell me, 
Well, you know, the, uh, the Bible says sing hymns. Well, let me tell you something. The hymns that the Bible is talking about, you've never heard. That's right. The hymns that you have heard were written, uh, you know, years ago, but not in the Bible days. So they're not even the same hymns that you're talking about. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's true. So we need to be spirit led in our worship, not lead the spirit. Yes. So when you try to dictate and, you know, give suggestions strongly to the worship team or something else, it's got to be spirit led. And the spirit will never change the message, but he will change the method. And mm -hmm. he is a now God, which we <laughs> are in a contemporary setting. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. And before you leave a church over music, just play your old nasty hymns at home or in your car. Okay? And the reason many of you are not getting victory in your battles is you're trying to use yesterday's manna when the assignment is today's music. Did somebody listen to me? Because it seems to me so the ones with victory are allowing themselves to be led. They're not trying to lead the Spirit. Many people want to serve the Lord but on an advisory capacity only. Let God advise you. Because if you travel like I did, I have to worship when I don't even know the language. <laughs> they'll be singing in Hebrew, they'll be singing in Russian, in, in Israel, and the worship will go for an hour. I just sing in tongues because I have no idea what they're saying. And it'll be a Jewish uh, twist, it'll be a Russian twist. Then we get to Africa and they get clear down to almost her knees touch the ground. And when you get a belly like me, it's hard to get up an hour later. <laughs> and they've got some of the weirdest music all over the world, yeah. the weirdest instruments, but I'm going to tell you right now, when you get to heaven, oh, it's it'll all be going to be there. Than it is on earth. Yeah. So allow yourself to be crucified, allow yourself to be disindoctrinated, allow yourself to be taught. Because as long as you're teachable, you're unreachable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. As long as you're unteachable, yeah. the enemy will always defeat you. It's not about what you like, and it's not about if you feel like worshiping. It's never sacrificial praise unless you have to sacrifice to give it. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you. Yeah, that's good. Re revival is actually inside you if you're born again. Yeah. But the revival inside you can only be released on the tail end of praise. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So get ready. Amen. Some of you gray haired, overweight, <laughs> beautiful saints in here. You're going to have to shake your hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you just want to have to give them a wave off. <laughs> Let that belly flow. Worship the Lord. Oh, you liked that, didn't you? Yeah. Hey, some people won't worship because of that. But the Bible says the fat belongs to the Lord. I'm all Jesus. <laughs> Give him praise. Don't praise be him. Wow. And Sunday morning, I wrote a report. Shh. If that works on her. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a big blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If anybody needs prayer, we'll be up here after the service, but we'll go ahead and dismiss. Amen. Thank you. Did you get anything out of that? Good? Ready to praise Him? Hallelujah. Praise God. Go with the Lord tonight. I can't do it right now. It ain't going to work,